So uh, thank you very much. And so now I'm going to talk to you about uh, a small site and a small excavation that we carried out in, in, northern, in northern Brittany, in northern western France. It's a small site, but it's a good example of, of public archaeology and coastal erosion in France. So the, the excavation that we carried out in 2015 and 2016 on the rocky islet of Rock saint leton this rocky islet here, uh, illustrates really well the difficulties of intervention, both logistical and administrative. We present it here as a rather emblematic case study, how to save a prehistoric and prehistoric dwelling in the French coast at the beginning of the 21st century. So uh, coastal erosion and anthropogenic pressure on the coastal strip combine their effects to permanently damage the tenuous remains left by prehistoric human groups. In the absence of destroyer prayer link that has allowed the development-led archaeology in France since the 1990s, the preservation of this diffuse heritage on the coast is often under the responsibility of amateur archaeologists. A specific monitoring program such as ALERT, directed by Marie van der, also amplify and coordinate this essential work. Uh, digging prehistoric sites on the coast is therefore an act underpinned by an important and original problem for recent prehistory. Habitat or storage structures, fisheries and foreshores or graves are or archaeological elements that feed them. Three excavations carried out on coastal sites will serve as examples of practical as application to these problems. Discovered in uh, 1985 by Daniel Rue, a volunteer prospector then operated as part of the ALERT project in 2015 and 2016 under the responsibility of two of us, Gregor Marchand and uh, Paul Olmos. The Rock St. Tedleton Rock Shelter in Santec, in northern, northern Brittany, benefit from this heritage and scientific practice. The rocky island of Rock St. Tedleton is almost two kilometers from the mainland and access on foot is only possible a few days a year, or you can do it by, by boat. But in the later case, boarding in the middle of the rocks is extremely dangerous, as soon as there are waves and wind. The difficulty of access means that the site has not suffered from significant anthropogenic pressure, but that on the other hand, it's very heavily pounded by oceanic storms. The waves exploding on the rocks strip the site, as we can see if you compare these pictures in 1985 and these pictures in 2015. It was then necessary to adapt the methods of excavation of a prehistoric site to gain an efficiency, with permanently in mind the rhythms of closure and opening of the land bridge, or the possibilities of mooring by boat. For all that, we did not sacrifice the systematic sweeping with water, only possibility to detect the finest lithic elements. At the end of, this, of our intervention, the archaeological levels most threatened by the ocean have been totally excavated and recovered. There are no longer any Olosen layers and uh, uh, 40 to 50 centimeters layers of Pleistocene loess protects the levels of Middle Paleolithic really well preserved. The site is an, at an altitude of 8 meters, that is to say 3 meters above the highest tides. The preserved archaeological levels are on a platform this platform, bordered by large rocks. The northern, the northern block is a partially collapsed rock shelter and the levels inside the shelter were almost totally washed away by the waves. This block collapsed at the, after the occupation of the Middle Paleolithic, but the protected level was not, since the water from the waves ran off underneath. Facing east, east the main excavation area along the west block is three, meter, three meters wide and 11 meters long. Excavation in this sector were carried out over a surface of approximately 19 uh, square meters. The first, our first speech in 2015 and the excavation in 2016 reveal a very rare stratigraphy in the region for a thickness of one meter. At the base, three levels here, three levels of Middle Paleolithic are sealed under the silty levels of the last Pleni Glacier. This 40 centimeters thick level is archaeologically untouched. At the top of, the, of that loss was a much damaged Athelian layer of final Paleolithic, followed by the Holocene occupations of the early late and second Mesolithic, a fire pit on the early Neolithic, and an Iron Age dwelling. 
These four successive anthropogenic layers were excavated and sieved over a thickness of only 20 centimeters, without strict sedimentary distinctions. Four dates by radiocarbon come to specify of this attribution, even if it's difficult to correlate a structurally archaeological objects and dates in a Olesen level rather disturbed. The stone structures, as you can see here, made of pebbles, of pebbles are visible at the top of the stratigraphy. These are very recent and are linked to the hunting of seabirds. A large hearth dated to the Iron Age lay underneath these structures within a level of very undulated loose silt. The ceramic depository consists of uh, 234 shards with a total of five pots, which is very low. Most ceramics can be dated back to the early middle second Iron Age. There is an absence of ceramic elements dating from the Gallo-Roman period, such as such Italian amphora, and seems to mark the, abandon, the abandonment of the site before the Roman conquest. Seven macro tools or, or anthropogenic elements have been identified in this upper level. They are generally tools on granite, pe on granite pebbles. They are very little invested. Used occasionally, they are mainly used for specific crushing or percussion actions. The Gallic level also contains a small layer of consumed seashells. The study focused on the data obtained from sediment samples, 20 liters, taken during the 2015 excavation. Five species of marine shellfish have been identified, including four gastropods and one bivalve. The total is uh, about 247 fragments. Limpets are the most consumed seashells. They are in majority, as you can see in the graphics, wherever the type of quantificator is used. So uh, we can say that the, the population of rocks and tech during the, the Iron Age gathered the shells in a specific environment, namely moderately to heavily beaten rocky areas where limpets, monodonts, and mussels are collected. The shows of these species can be explained by the environment surrounding the site, probably composed of a dense rocky area, as is in the case today. Indeed, it's very likely, indeed, it's very likely to, that the prehistoric coastal landscape resembled the present landscape. I heard a feast of limpets, few hammers, and some poch during the Iron Age, the rock shelter of rocks and Tecleton is a temporary habitat on an island already separated from the continent. The flames of the Mesolithic lie in the lower part of the two, uh, 20 centimeters thick Olothen soil without intrusion of Gallic shorts. One of the best identified levels corresponding to the early Mesolithic with some specific nucleus, a point, a point with two slaughtered edge and a row base, two scalene triangles, and four narrow lamellae with slaughter edge. The presence of cherried hazelnut shells allowed to obtain an absolute dating of uh, 7,800 calibrated BC in the transition period pre boreal boreal. The existence of a level of the second Mesolithic, 6,800 6, BC, characterized by the presence of four symmetrical trapezes and a truncated blade, is also confirmed. Without a, sedimentary, without a sedimentary transition between the Mes Mesolithic and the Latinian occupation. During the Mesolithic, with a sea level between 30 and 10 meters below the present one, the rock shelter of rocks and Tec Leton was attached to the continent and dominated a landscape difficult to describe now, with a coast several kilometers from the north. A pit hearth was dug in, the Mesoli in these Mesolithic levels. It was dated on charcoal to the interval of 4,000 uh, 4, to 4,600, which corresponds to the reg regional Neolithic tape Villeneuve Saint Germain. There are, there are no other material elements of these species to the Neolithic. So, is Roxantec already an island? The links between human societies and the maritime domain are unknown. But at this time, this short passage is not only going to enlighten on this question. Lowest levels here, about uh, 40 centimeters thick, covers the site and protects a sequence of the Middle Paleolithic period. The presence of Musterian lithic pieces in the highest level remains are tenuous, and we have to be assessed during the subsequent excavations. But such, such artifacts are very 
abundant in the three lower stratigraphic units. A series of uh, 274 lithic pieces must be attributed to the Middle Paleolithic. This assembly is, in fact, mainly composed of, of debris and thermally exploded size sketches and cutting products. This small lithic assemblage presents quite strong typo typochronological characters, such as pretty well marked use of the Levallois method. The Middle Paleolithic occupation of rocks and petroleum is part of a typical Musterian with scrapers dominating the retouched tools and Levallois technology, like many sites in the Armorican Massif. The main scientific interest of the rescue excavation conducted on, at Rox and Tedleton was to document a very rare stratigraphy in Western France. It extends from Middle Paleolithic to the Aryan Age and even to the present if we take into account the recent hunting post. The elements collected are of local interest for the Iron Age and the Early Neolithic, of regional interest for the uh, Mesolithic and the Middle Paleolithic. We try to combine the meticulous, meticulous methods of prehistoric excavations with an intervention in a difficult context, with the schedule fluctuating according to tides and climatic hazards. At the present time, and to finish, menace to the littoral sites are clearly not sufficiently taken into account by the French authorities, and this whole heritage is still exposed to ongoing deterioration. Threats to much prehistoric to prehistoric coastal sites are still poorly assessed by archaeological heritage managers. Reports of discoveries by non-professional archaeologists have been the first stage of alert for decades, and while it's still necessary, they can hardly be considered as sufficient evidence of these sites. We must now hope for an improvement in the management of this site and anticipate the inexorable destruction. This will inevitably require, require additional financial resources for tidal intervention, but also convert some regulatory measures. For a site strutting the foreshore and the, and the coast, authorization must generally be successively obtained from the regional archaeological service, the DRASM, the Conservatoire du Littoral, and the locality in question. And curiously, the rage of the ocean doesn't seem to have the same calendar. Thank you very much. <laughs>